Hey everyone, it's Teddy, aka James Kazal on MTGO, coming at you with some more legacy content. Now last week I played a four color control deck, every color but white. Green six control, green Grixis, check pile, whatever you want to call it. Uh, slight correction though from last week, I erroneously stated the deck's originator's name to be Thomas Mars. It's actually Thomas Marr. Thomas Mars is the lead singer of French rock band Phoenix, which is why I, that name was in my head. But anyways, the deck I was looking at last week kind of just threw a lot of things at the wall. I wanted to try a bunch of different cards out, and this time I'm kind of tightening it up. I'm still retaining all those cool green cards I want to play, like Grist, Uro, Endurance, Minsk and Boo. But I also noticed one card was missing last week. One of the cards that initially drew me to the archetype, and that was Leovold, Emissary of Trust. It's a black, green, and blue for a legendary creature, Elf Advisor, and it says each opponent can't draw more than one card each turn. So it is the Narset, part of Reveil's effect. It's not a whole Breacher or a Bowmaster's effect. And the second line of text, whenever you or a permanent you control becomes the target of a spell or an ability opponent controls, you may draw a card. So very powerful stuff. Looking forward to casting that because I have not played with it in a very long time. And I also kind of cleaned up some of the edges there. Instead of Drown in the Lock, I just decided to go with two Shield's Edict, which has been working really well for me in my Grixis control decks. And when I took this list to Discord and asked for some feedback, the major feedback was about the mana base and how the basics were probably going to trip me up in the long run. So I made a slight concession to that. I'm someone who just really likes playing with basics. I like hitting my land drops and not getting taken down from wasteland. So I cut the basic swamp. It definitely seemed like a bridge too far. Although you could also argue that the basic forest is not great. Although with Uro being a consideration, I decided to just cut the basic swamp. And I also cut Cephalid Coliseum and I added a Misty Rainforest. So I'm going to just start there and see if that shores up the mana issues. Although we didn't really run into any last time. It's only a matter of time before you really get got. Um, I also added a second cling to dust because I never leave home without two. Yeah, I think it's just one of the best reasons to be playing a fair black deck in Legacy. I think the sideboard is untouched. It felt really good last time. Oh, also I'm playing two fluster storms because there are decks like Mississippi River and Cascade Combo. I just think fluster storm is well positioned right now and I like having one kind of uh, counter spell on the main board. Last time it was spell pierce and I don't know if that lines up as well anymore. I think fluster storm is pretty well positioned for the aforementioned decks and also Mind's Desire is still out there. People are still playing a lot of storm seeing where that ends up. But yeah hopefully this time we will get to return Grist to our hand with Colgon's command and do a bunch of other cool stuff and we'll see if we can improve on our record from last time. All right, hello everyone. Welcome back, or welcome to the video rather. This is match one. Got a very nice Grixis looking hand for this green six control league. We're on the draw, we're weak to wasteland. Let's see what happens. They're starting with a ponder over there, sure. No shuffle. Perhaps we will do the same. Okay, cool. This can either be a green source or I can play on basics, but given that they let on basic island, it's not really traditionally indicative of a wasteland strategy. So let's lead on underground sea. Okay, Uro's cool. Another cling to dust might put a lot of stress on our graveyard, and there's a basic anyways. Let's go like this. And we got a nice curve of either Strix or Bowmasters, depending on what they do next turn, into Uro's front half. Unfortunately, Badlands does not help escape Uro, but I think we'll figure it out. Prismatic Vista, okay, this makes me feel like this might be Jeskai? Let's chill. 
brainstorm. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to do the Bowmaster's move. I think that is a trap if you're not looking to close the game really quickly. Not to mention, they probably would have just swords to plowshared me. Flooded Strand, go. All right, I'm going to flash in the Bowmasters. So I probably look pretty dumb for not just doing this when I could have had a lot more power on board. But I'm into spending my mana. They might have just tried to plow it before it existed. Yep, there we go. Man, what incredibly twisted white mage was able to create a spell that for just one white mana could convince pretty much any entity in the whole multiverse to drop everything and become a farmer. Thoughtseize is a good draw. Let's start with an Uro and hope it resolves. That's a carryover from the last video. Tapping Tropical Island for a wrong color. Okay, Plague Engineer, I don't mind. Always usually pretty good against a fair deck. Although, I guess this could be Cephalid Breakfast? Let's find out. They are going to Island Cycle. No, it's, it is Jeskai Control. Or it could just be straight blue-white, actually. Although I wouldn't be surprised if they had, like, Pyroblast in the sideboard or something. I'm going to take Narset. That is by far the most cumbersome to fight through. Although Prismatic Ending is pretty annoying on Uro. Oh, but maybe they don't have... They didn't fetch red right there, so... It's possible they might not even be able to Prismatic Ending it in the first place. Yep, there goes that. This looks so traditionally blue-white miracles-y that they might have Monastery Mentor. And Plague Engineer lines up nice against that. If they really want to burn Supreme Verdict on Uro, I think that's fine. But that also include me getting rid of Cling to Dust. So I think I'm actually going to just slow down. Play a Strix. Bolt is awesome. Let's get Tega. So we have double green. Bolt to Fairy. Great. Now it's tempting to play Baleful Strix to be mana efficient, but I don't want to walk both of them into a, um, a pretty easy Supreme Verdict for them. Ooh, another Teferi? And I'm still going to hang on to Cling to Dust just in case they have like a Snapcaster Mage or something. Not that it would do me much good with a Teferi on board. Bowmasters. Okay. Let's try and overwhelm this thing. It might get them to burn Supreme Verdict, and then I can maybe land Uro and just get up to some mischief. Although maybe Bowmasters is more significant. No, I like the ping. That way if they want to bounce something, it'll just cost them their Planeswalker. Land number five, okay. Going up. Prismatic ending on Bowmasters. Now they don't have the mana to Supreme Verdict. And they have two other unknowns in hand. Snapcaster Mage, very cool. First, let's see if we can get any damage on this Teferi, though. Oh, 
Oh yeah, we do. Target lightning bolt. Lightning bolt target to fairy. To fairy's gone. That's two of them down. And now if they supreme verdict and virtually three for one us. Oh, the wandering emperor. I don't like that one bit. Although we do have a lot of onboard pressure. Uh, they just wrote oops in the chat. Maybe they meant to cast supreme verdict. Um, well. I'm actually more scared of this than Supreme Verdict, to be honest. Let's hit Ending and look for Force of Will. No luck. Okay. Maybe they were looking to do this after a Verdict, though, just so they could have a little more board control. And then they don't lose one of their own creatures. There's the red mana. They might have another prismatic ending. And I think the goal is just kind of grind them out of answers. Oh, Shielder's Edict. That's great. So I don't have to commit this Plague Engineer. Let's just do that. These creatures' lives are forfeit in the face of that verdict that I think they definitely tried to cast last turn, unless they're like super next leveling me and just did that to make me think they wanted to cast Supreme Verdict but didn't. But no, they're just going to throw away this Samurai token, fill up my graveyard a little more. Let's cast a Ponder here, leaving up all of our colors. Wasteland is not going to hit anything but I think I do want to make a land drop and then shuffle away the other two lands. Fine by me. Now they don't really seem like they even want a Supreme Verdict, but I think that still favors me. Just in case they have like back to basics or something weird like that. Let's grab our other basic. Fluster Storm, probably not going to find that much to do when they have made six land drops, but we'll see. And I'm feeling so twisted, I might even cling to dust at the end of turn just to grind out a little more, even though escaping Uro, I think, is more important to get the game over with. Brainstorm, sure. If there's a big fourth arrow lingus at the end of this, Fluster Storm will have some pretty awesome stuff to do. But that will also be kind of a nombo with their Supreme Verdict. Okay, their Supreme Verdict. You got it. Now, I don't think I'm walking into anything by casting Uro here, unless they have a mainboard Pyroblast, which would be entirely sick. And I think I'll just uh, Fluster Storm it. Lightning Bolt, cool. But this is the uh, game we navigated towards. Just grind them out. I'll leave a polluted delta in the yard though. That resolved. Ooh, nice. And a little bit of ramp. Mm, it's probably pretty safe to play this Strix as well. Ah, I did it again. I should uh, donate to a charity every time I tap Tropical Island for the wrong color. Ooh, Snapcaster Mage. Looking good. Bolt, snap, bolt. Puts them to six. I need to start thinking more like a, a four color pile player, though. I feel like that's a desperate Grixis line. Narset, sure. They're going to Azkanta. Ah, fourth Erlingus, I knew it. Here comes Prismatic Ending, I'm sure. Yep. It did its job. It traded uh, 
traded quite heavily. All right, now let's get our Volcanic Island and hit Narset with a Lightning Bolt. Great. And another Uro. How lovely. Go green, blue, and whatever. Get that in the yard for future considerations. No land to put in. Um, it does feel maybe a little risky to play Plague Engineer. Yeah, I don't want the to really discourage them from casting this forth because I think this fluster storm will blow them out. Yep, big elbow tap. Just in case they have two counter spells, though, I'm gonna brainstorm first. I was planning on doing it anyways. Can't get rid of that Wasteland. Well, we'll put Scalding Tarn on top, draw that, and then shuffle away Wasteland. And then for now, hit that with uh, Flusterstorm. Okay, that's enough for them. The Blue Mirror. Let's cut two forces. Cut this Wasteland. Grab the Red Blasts. Grab a couple Carpets. Grab... Flusterstorm and the Blue Blasts. And then we can cut some of the less impactful stuff that's pretty soft to force, like, well, Leovold's not that soft to force. I mean, uh, I, I meant swords this whole time. Now uh, let's cut that and I guess another Force of Will. And this seems insane, but I guess Misty Rainforest and Plague Engineer is not really at its best when they can just swords it out of the way. It's not drawing a card on ETB or anything like that. I also foresee them bringing in some blue blasts, so I'm going to cut Fable. Hand is a little awkward, but I think if we just grab a Volcanic Island, because I don't really want to Thought Seize this deck on turn one. I usually want to Thought Seize them when I want a spell to resolve, because usually they'll have like a a melange of answers, like maybe a red blast and a blue blast, and if you just kind of pick the right one, that lines up with your spell, you can get your spell to resolve. I definitely want the land I get to be blue. And I'll probably want to use these lightning bolts early on as well. So yeah, I think Volcanic Island is the move here. I also really don't want to brainstorm on turn one. I'd rather do it on turn two when I can find another fetch land to throw in. I tried some versions of this deck, or I didn't never played it outright, but I thought about some versions with a Trium, but I, that never made it past the planning stage. Minsk and Boo, all right. I'm a little nervous. They're gonna Red Blast, okay. Interesting use of Red Blast when I have so many big blue bombs, but I mean, I think it will be effective here. But it also might have just spared me from getting a Brainstorm locked. I feel like it's not that crazy for me to find a land next turn, but I could also draw a black card and feel bad about shit. Maybe they're Brainstorm locked. No, they're not. They found a Lorien. Alright, one land, one time. Cool. It's not black, but it'll do the trick. Now I could snap Brainstorm, but I already made a land drop, so let's fire this sucker in. Invest in the future. Red Blast, love it. This tells them I'm out of lands, though. And they have four mana over there. If they have a Wandering Emperor, that could be pretty scary. 
but I think Minsk and Boo lines up against that pretty well. Brainstorm, okay. Let's do it. No fear. Now I could cast Thoughtseize here, and I'm right now I'm leaning towards just putting back one of each duplicate, one bolt, one red blast. I have Snapcaster Mage anyways for the, the follow-up as well. So yeah, I think Thought Seize is good here, and I'll probably do it off a Bayou. That gives us green, green, blue, blue for Uro. Minsk and Boo is also lurking. Oh, but Scalding Tarn does not get Bayou. Whoops. I think in that case, I'm going to get an Underground C. We might see an Emperor in response here. No, okay. Ruination, that's pretty funny. That would also take out their red source though, so maybe they're not really interested in doing that. I think I'm supposed to take the fourth. Although Ruination can do some pretty nasty stuff. Can they even afford to cast it? Their hand is so red. I don't want to take Narset because I have a red blast that lines up really well against it, and also Lightning Bolt. If I take fourth though, they'll have more of a reason to cast Ruination. So do I just take Dress down? That seems really funny, but I think it's the line. Let's see what happens. This might entice them into casting Narset next turn, which is what I want. Yep. And they're both coming in. Okay. Let's hit one with Bolt. Hopefully hit a land drop and then go Minsk and Boo, hold up Pyroblast. Cool. Well, that one's in there. I would love to do that. Let's make a 4-4 and take the Monarchy. Flusterstorm, don't mind that. We'll play some uh, high-powered magic here for a minute where we're kind of bouncing the Monarchy off each other. But then after the dust settles, we should just rip through this. Narset, hit that with Pyroblast for sure. So now they have three unknowns in hand. About to be four if they take the monarchy back. Yep, they're just going to ignore Minsk and Boo. which is maybe maybe they can't afford to send an attack at Minskin Boo, but seems like not the best situation for them. They missed a land drop, which I guess means they're swarming with cards. And they might have a plow for this Boo, in which case I will probably Fluster Storm. Orcish Bowmasters, cool. Another good one. Um, I think and I probably want to just take the monarchy and then blow up that human knight token. Ooh, no swords. Don't mind it. And then we'll draw four. That's pretty wild. And just in case there's some crazy, uh, Ruination incoming. I will play out a basic here. And I think we'll just chill for a moment. Or we can cast a Bowmasters, just so we don't have to discard. I think that leaves enough effects open. Okay, they've had enough. 
yep, hard to compete with that card advantage engine of Minsk and Boo. And they stumbled a little bit. I think that the thought seize is pretty timely. I think if they had had a dress down on tap, they actually didn't really curve out. Maybe they didn't have the mana to do it, but stuffing that first um, Minsk and Boo activation by taking away Boo's trample or haste, what is it? Either one. That could have been pretty bad for us, but we did it. Looking good. Let's keep on rocking. Alright, now I can say welcome back to round two. Uh, basic forest showing up in the opening hand again. Life from the loam. Brainstorm. Force of will. Oh, but we're against Yorion, so it's probably going to be some grindy wild stuff. Yep, Misty Rainforest. We got blue Yorion over there. Maybe blue Zenith. Sure is looking like it. They're going to lead on a Ponder. No shuffle. It's just like the beginning of last match. Another brainstorm. Well, we do have kind of an easy pitch for force then, but I doubt I'll be forcing next turn against a blue Yorion deck. Well, maybe if I like, uh, if they like force of negation, my uh, life from the loam, that picks up my delta if I don't draw another land, which I might just do anyways. If they don't play like Delighted Halfling here or something. Yeah, if they don't draw, if they don't play a Delighted Halfling and I don't have to get red yet, I'll probably go for Underground Sea. Or I could continue playing on Basics, because I know a lot of these blue Yorion decks run like a Singleton Wasteland. Yeah, I don't really feel the need to brainstorm right now. Another force, okay. No black cards yet either, so yeah, I'm going to be super greedy. Play a one-for-one one loam here. I was uh, convinced to stop running that basic swamp, but I sure would like to grab one. Well, maybe not, because then, you know... Basic Swamp does not get our... Oh, it's just what I was talking about. I just outlined this, and I think this is worth fighting over. Weirdly enough. It's a two for two, after all. If they force again, that would be, like, insane. Oh my god. What are they going to target, though? Loam or my force? My force. This is hilarious. Um, I mean, I think I'm kind of in for this. I think Uro will grind them out. They're at two cards. I didn't think they'd care so much. All right, thank you. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm not feeling, I'm not actually that bitchy about it, but I did really want it. They're going to shuffle away their brainstorm cards. They have a Tundra. That's not that surprising. Another Ponder. Okay. And a Shuffle that time. But they do hit a land drop. And they reveal some red mana. They pitched a Lorien revealed and a Brainstorm. So we're about halfway through their cantrips, I bet. Two Ponders, two Brainstorms down. No dredge. Ooh, another fetch land. Might want to dredge next turn. And this seems a little crazy, but I am going to get an island here. Play on basics. Cast an Uro. Uro's in there. Lovely. No dredge. Ooh, Bowmasters. Keeps getting better and better. Then on its face, I think I might want to get a Tega. Although then I'm still off black. So I guess Bayou 
Well, then I'm off red. There is definitely a cost to playing on basics. But there's that wasteland. I am out of um, basics though, so the fun has to stop somewhere. Bolting face is really interesting because then I can escape our own next turn and not have to exile life from the loam as part of the cost, which I would really like to keep around. But maybe I just don't have to cast our own next turn. I don't have to. I've got action in hand. Okay. Yes, Dredge. And, ooh, Gris the Hungry Guy. Okay. Let's go for a full value loam here. I'm going to get a Underground Sea. See what they think about this. Nice. Run out that mire. And let's just chill. Doesn't look like they're electing the wasteland. It does seem kind of futile against the, the loam strategy. Just a pass over there. Hmm. I wonder if I should flash in Bowmasters. Uh, I'm going to wait. I do have a lot of mana. Uh, no loam. I mean, no dredge. Ooh, I just gave up information. I need to tighten up. Let's grab a tropical island and escape this arrow. See what happens. I think the worst thing that could happen is a hard cast force of will. Otherwise, I think we're just pulling way ahead. Okay, arrow's in there. It might eat a swords, but that puts us pretty far ahead. Ooh, leyline binding. Okay. Don't really have any good answers to that in my 60, I don't think. But we're still getting a trigger. This still is a favorable favorable trade for us. No dredge. More bowmasters, cool. Put in this delta. Try and protect Vitega for a little bit longer. And let's just sit back and then I guess commit at least one bowmasters at the end of turn. Start pressuring their life total. Just need to kind of Turn the corner here. I feel like we've ground them out pretty well. Mystic Sanctuary. We do not have a cling to dust, so they are going to get a ponder. They're going to ponder into our bowmasters at least, and hopefully their last card is not more removal. That'll give us a, a pretty nifty clock. Let's round out our colors with a Badlands. Still holding up Lightning Bolt off a Volcanic Island if we need it. Okay, looks like we are getting that trigger. Three power on board. And they're going to shuffle. There is a land drop from them. And they're also not going for Yorion, which I find pretty suspicious. No dredge. Another bolt. Okay. I think it would be a little aggressive to play another Bowmasters for one more point of damage. So let's just hang back. An upkeep fetch. Now I'm starting to think their last card is maybe land. Okay, they're going for ponder again. It's really tempting to get another Bowmasters in there and just kind of put them to dead if this Ponder misses. I think this only really gets punished by, um, like, Plague Engineer, but it doesn't seem like they're on black. I think they're every color but black. Supreme Verdict, they would need another white source. They shuffle again. And they're just going to pack it up. Okay. That was a pretty sweet game that I guess came down to fighting over a life from the loam on turn two, which I feel like almost never happens. And it felt pretty silly when I was doing that, but it turned out to work pretty well. 
Also, this is a deck with multiple Mystic Sanctuaries, so I think Carpet of Flowers will give us a pretty big mana advantage. I have to imagine they're also playing Uro, so I'll take a Surgical. I don't think I need two Fluster Storms here. I, I think the Yorion control decks, a lot of their threats are less on the stack and more like, or less um, instants and sorceries and more like Minsk and Boo and stuff like that. Let's go down to two Force of Will. Wasteland seems like it actually do some pretty cool stuff here. I feel like I want to cut Thought Seize, but let's just keep it in until we have like a better idea of what they're up to. Because we don't really fully know. They kind of failed to function that game. I'm going to cut Plague Engineer, or I'll keep it around. I bet they have Minsk and Boo. I'll go down one Uro because they are Swords and Leyline Binding deck. And a Strix. And the Lightning Bolt. Maybe two Lightning Bolts. Mm, I think I'd rather cut Thoughtseize. Not bringing in Blue Blast is, I think, might be a bit of a mistake. But we'll see. We can reevaluate. Uh, yeah, I can keep this. One lander with a carpet. If they fight super hard over the carpet, then they might not have any resources to fight over, like, Brainstorm and other stuff. But I like the grindy potential here. Land is the best draw. Red Blast is also not bad. Okay. Despite Wasteland, I think it's just a little too risky to not get Tropical Island here. Okay, Carpet Resolves. Okay, the problem with this hand, though, in Carpet is that I don't really have anything proactive to do. I feel like Carpet's really good when you have stuff like Minsk and Boo and Uro to spend your mana on. Okay, it's just eating a prismatic ending. Well, we could be in some trouble. I'll take any land off the top, though. I like that one. And without them showing me any black mana, I don't feel any pressure to brainstorm before I really want to. I'm also not really that upset about Carpet eating a Prismatic Ending, because like I said, my hand is not really proactive. I don't really have anything to spend that mana on. This hand, in fact, is heavily reactive. Uro? Sure. This is the kind of thing I'd rather Surgical than Cling to Dust. And I suppose I can do that on their next draw step, though if it starts like a big fight about it, um, it might tap, it kind of incentivizes me to not spend mana when I could be doing something pretty nasty this turn. So let's just brainstorm, see if we can set up a turn here. Like our own Uro or Bowmasters. So yeah, if we're going to have a fight over this, I'll, I want it to happen right now. And if that does happen, and I lose that fight, I'll want Cling to Dust. So I guess... Red Blast and Brainstorm are just the least impactful cards here. Ideally, I don't really shuffle away any of them, but if I must, Brainstorm for sure, and then Red Blast. All right, bombs away. Okay, the one ring looking pretty scary. And double force negation means that, okay, and they also have fourth air lingus, cast into the fire. I don't have a ring. So that actually lines up against Bowmasters pretty well. There is a bunch of Terminus. I don't really mind seeing that too much. Endurance is still scary. One Pyroblast, just one Pyroblast. Leyline Bindings. Four Swords. Okay. Yeah, let's keep all our stuff around. They're going to have a ring next turn, which is really scary. I guess I could just start building up my position on board, though, and flash in Bowmasters in response. I think that's where we're at. 
then once that's on board, I can play at Bowmasters, and if I don't hit a land drop somehow, I'll have some interaction to hold up. But they are going to run away with this game if I can't just take them out quickly. And I think this is the point where Narset shows up a lot more than Bowmasters against the One Ring. Although against certain decks like Carnforge Ring or Eight Key, since they're using stuff like Ancient Tomb and stuff, Bowmasters can be pretty impactful. Let's at least get that one ping in. And I think I want to do it off a Underground C? Or how about Vol... Mm. I'm going to leave Volcanic Island in the deck because it casts both Flusterstorm and Red Blast. But if I need to cling to Dust... I don't really want to go for a bad lands, so we'll see. I don't think I'll need to cling to dust, though. Here comes a ring. They have one unknown in hand. They might draw right now. No, they don't. Okay. Wasteland. Taking them off red could be pretty cool, since without Uro, they'll be pretty dependent on 4th Aerolingus and Minskin Boo to try and close the game out. Red Blast lands up with the Orion pretty nice. If I cast Uro and the trigger doesn't come up with a land, I'll be stranded with this mana, this uh, colorless mana, I mean. How important is it that I wasteland right now? It's probably now or never, honestly. All right. This also lowers their island count. And who knows how many red sources they can play. Well, I mean, I should know. I just uh <laughs> I just use surgical against them, but my mind is racing right now. So I need a red source. Uh, I think I'd rather it be Tega cuz I already have two blue. This will give us two green. And then it would be awesome if we hit a land off this. They're going to draw in response. Send that ping at myself. And they're doing something else. Swords on Bowmasters. Okay. So they might have some plan for Uro. Maybe just another Swords. I hope not. I feel like Bowmasters was kind of a, a big part of the plan. We do hit a land, though. That's pretty sweet. So we can escape Uro, and we'll see who can grind the hardest. But now their, Uro, uh, I mean, now their one ring is kind of unchecked, so we're kind of in trouble. Hopefully that Wasteland did a lot to stymie their plans. Draw two cards. Yep. There is a land. I'm sure they have another red source in their deck. Once again, though, they're not going after Yorion. And they have hard cast uh, force negation up. Lightning Bolt. Okay. Even though I have Uro, I don't think I can win the, the long game here. Now I do wish I had Carpet. I guess we could round out our colors with either a bayou or a volcanic island. And I think given my hand, I don't have double black yet. I have double everything else except red. Okay. Let's get that one. And let's leave wasteland around. Seems like they might struggle with that one. Uro resolves. And they're doing something right now. There's a red source. Ah, it's Leyline Binding. That card dodges Flusterstorm anyways. So we might have a hard time closing this out. Really counting on an Uro attack just getting in there. But we'll see.
Mystic Sanctuary going after Prismatic Ending. And they'll draw it. I wonder if they're just going to stabilize hitting that Orc token. Ponder, sure. Turns out that Wasteland didn't do too much. Yep. And a pass. So I think they're just going to hold up Force Negations. Because they could have gotten Uro there. I mean, uh, Yorion. My hope now is that they just have a really hard time closing the game without their Uros. But I'm not feeling great. Maybe their rings will kill them. We have Lightning Bolt. Maybe I can stop an effort to play a new ring. Unlikely with my current spread. 11 cards in hand. Should be able to figure this out. Probably pretty easy for them to counter a lightning bolt. Prismatic ending on their own ring. That's interesting. Do I fight over that? Seems really funny. Okay, let's see what they think about bolt face. Hardcast Force. Okay, maybe I'll just Red Blast that. I don't think I can win a long game. Okay, cool, that happened. Now do I Fluster Storm, or should I Cling first? I think it's pretty unlikely that they'll be able to beat five copies of a counter spell. That's like their entire hand. And they're tapped out. I never thought this has been the most insane four color mirror I've ever played. I mean, I haven't played that many, but they tried to remove their own ring and I just stopped them from doing it. And now I'm just desperately looking for stuff, so I'm going to cling when they can't pitch cast force negation. And I guess I'm going after their prismatic ending. Leovold. That can stop a ring. Can't force negation it either. Ponder. Okay, I'm going to look for, like, Snapcaster Mage or Lightning Bolt, first of all. Although, if maybe Force of Will will work. Oh, not really. I don't have something to pitch to it. Yeah, how about just Ponder? There's Snapcaster Mage. If I can do it with Force Backup, I'd feel better about it. So I don't cast Leovold. This is so bizarre. I don't think they'll be able to kill me from 20. Okay. Yep, so let's put Snap on top and then Force under it. Although it's probably unlikely they're going to tap out again. So I just do that on their turn. I think there will be a window for this. They haven't shown me Black Mana yet, and I don't think they're a discard deck. So, although it, maybe it just makes sense to play Leovold. There's not another blue card underneath, though. It's Cling to Dust, which might come up with a blue card. This is also a body that can attack and would draw me card if they tried to remove it, unless they have Terminus. I think this is a pretty important decision, but... I'm going to stick with my, my other line. And if Uro was their out for gaining life, then... Yep, they're at three. Okay. Let's see what happens. And if they have to spend a lot of their turn trying to remove the one ring, we might just get them there too. Another ring. I think that's okay, right? If I force this, then they just um, hardcast force negation, so... But do I want them to do that? Then they're tapped out. Yeah, I think I'd rather just really put them to the test, right? Oh, I should have cast Leovold. Okay. Gotta be patient. They might even be too scared to tap it at all. And now we're getting weirdly closer to parity at this point. Endurance. Ooh. Yeah, that's not good. Makes my Snapcaster Mage pretty bad. So do I fight over this now? Probably. That was my whole route for victory. 
mean, they can't force a negation me. Red Blast, yeah. Probably should have guessed that. Let's have them sacrifice at least. And now we are sitting tight, waiting for that perfect opportunity. Lorien revealed. They already had a million cards, whatever. To fairy. Well, if they activate Scalding Tarn, then that adds uh, Colgon's command to the list of stuff that's lethal. But I don't think we're getting through at this point. They got seven cards to our one. But let's just try and make him sacrifice to fairy at least. They're going to force. Pitching Lorien revealed, sure. There is a Terminus. Might as well cast it, right? Now they're ready to draw because Teferi can bounce it and all that. Shuffle off the Ponder. I think there are worlds where this can work out. And they're probably feeling like they kind of have to cast that ring just to get protection from everything. You never know what could happen. But maybe not. Ponder, okay. Nothing too crazy here. I think I'm going to shuffle. Bowmasters, love it. Just keep on hacking away at their life total. And if they're living in fear of Lightning Bolt, which it looks like they are, um, maybe they don't feel like they can answer or force a Orcish Bowmasters. And this is two more bodies they have to deal with. I mean, they could just get Yorion and cast it. Cast into the fire, sure. Endurance, okay. Now they got a clock. I wonder if they're going to put their entire deck back into their deck. No, they're not going to target anybody. Interesting. I do have a lot of outs. Ooh, they can take me off black. Yeah, that's bad. Now Colgon's command is not an out. Or future Bowmasters. And it's also strands cling to dust in hand. All right, they grabbed Yorion, and they cast Yorion, and they're tapped pretty low. I don't know if they want to go to one off these fetch lands or force a will, so what do you say, deck? Well, we got black mana back. Don't know if it matters too much what I hit here. Let's hit Prismatic Ending. They're going to force, sure. Well, they're kind of low on resources. I know one of their cards is the One Ring. Definitely could get a solid rip and close this out in two. Wow, that was three Force of Negations. That's wild. I was feeling pretty good about this game until that junction where I should have cast Leovold. Mm, they shuffle again. He got us dead in three. Ponder. Looks like they're going to counter it. Probably smart. I mean, I'm not running Exquisite Firecraft or anything, but you never know. One more draw step to do this. Even less if they have like fourth Aerolingus or something. The one ring, sure. That gives them protection from everything. I guess that locks it up, too, because of Teferi. Or I could draw, like, Strix into something. Another Shuffle. Wasteland, sure. Going after Black. Yep. Put me to one. You have protection from everything. And Teferi, not looking good. But I could still, like, Strix into... Edict, or no, I don't have black. Ooh, K-Command. Okay. Well, that's it for us.
But the good news is that we're like three minutes ahead on clock and they're under six minutes in a grindy control mirror. So that's cool. And they're not messing around. They're going straight to combat. Close. Very close. I'm not convinced I want any more blue blast though. The fourth aerolingus though makes me want another fluster storm. And I want another surgical because they really struggled gaining back life and all that without Uro. So defanging Uro is pretty great. That being said, like we both don't have a lot of time on clock. I'm maybe two minutes ahead, but I also have under nine minutes for a grindy control mirror. Uh, Plague Engineer can go if they're going to keep in four swords against me. And on the play, I think I'll also cut a Wasteland. It just doesn't seem to be where I want to be against an Uro deck. Yep. Looks great. Although I'm going to have to try and grind fast. This is a really grindy hand, and I need to grind fast. Oh, but not that fast. Don't skip my turn. All right. Okay, no wasteland. Let's yield. Ponder. That's cool, but I'd rather get a two for one. And maybe basic forest wasn't that wise to get. So I guess I'll get volcanic island as well. I just assumed this was going to resolve. Nice. They mulligan. We're gassed up. We don't have to worry about land drops. That loam was absolutely clutch. Brainstorm, sure. Flooded strand, no brainstorm lock. Disappointing. No dredge. Carpet of flowers is cool. Let's run that sucker out. It is mana neutral at this point because of that tundra. Play a land, let's go to second main and then generate a blue and cast ponder. Brainstorm looking great. All right, you're up. Now, if they want to get basic planes here, okay, but they don't. Playing into our carpet, probably can't really afford to do otherwise. There's the planes. Teferi is super obnoxious. I really want to look for a red blast here. And I know that there are two lands on top of my deck, so let's do this. Grab a trop, since both of our seas are in hand. And we draw like the best spread of cards ever. Red Blast that. They're going to fight. <clears throat> Excuse me, they're going to fight. Sure, okay. They're going to bounce the carpet, whatever. That's actually fine with me. Recast. Okay. Let's make black. Cast Bowmasters. Pick off to Fairy. And we're chilling. They pitched DeLorean revealed to do that. And they're still without green mono over there. Hopefully they have a bunch of cantrips in hand. I don't want to put my upkeep stop back in, so let's just shuffle right now. Get an underground C. Cast into fire, sure. No dredge. Land sucks. Um, yeah, let's start grinding. Cling to dust. Minsk and Boo is great. Let's gas up that and start the clock. But not super happy that my only form of defense right now is surgical extraction. 
That part's not great. Ponder. And they did not like what they saw, so we did it. Cool, that puts us at 2-0. and Feeling pretty good. Here we are in round number three, getting back at it. Looks like we're against another Yorion strategy. And I would love to keep this hand of, of um, all of our colors and a bunch of haymakers. No turn one plays, too bad though. So if they're on death and taxes, which doesn't look like because they're playing one swept teeth. Although that is a basic planes and an ether vial. Okay, yep. Egg on my face, that's for sure. Death and taxes. And I like the way Orcish Bowmasters lands up against that deck. Mostly on the play, though. On the draw, a little worse. Uh, let's run out this delta. Drawing a land is not great there, but hopefully just the raw power of these cards can just beat the mono-white control deck here. I'm assuming they're also playing Bowmasters, though. Most Death and Taxes lists are these days. Yep, and there's a scrub land. No doubt. Thought sees me. Okay, let's see what they take. If they take Bowmasters, our hand slows down considerably. But maybe they'll be concerned about one of the Planeswalkers. Even though it might be difficult to protect them if they can get on board with this file. But I am pretty happy to see that one of their cards is Thought Seize and not a creature. Okay, yeah, they do take Bowmasters. And see what happens. Fable the Mirror Breaker. Well, our hand's not any more fast, but it is a non-land card, so that's cool. Aether Vial on one coming in. What do we got? Mother of Runes. That's terrible. They're at a pretty big advantage on tapping with Mother of Runes. The only thing that's going right for us is that they're kind of low on cards in hand. They've got three. But that's not really going to matter. They have a lot of virtual card advantage with that Yorion incoming. They also just played a Wasteland. Force of Will, no blue card. Great. I think I just play Grist and tick up. They can flash in Bowmasters and nearly take it out. They'll be able to take it out if they also have a two drop in addition to Bowmasters. I could play Fable the Mirror Breaker, which also has some problems with Bowmasters, but at least it'll give me a 2-2. Two -two. And that can't get picked off so easily. And I'm vulnerable to Wasteland here because Bloodstained Mire can't get a basic. But let's get Basic Island, Basic Forest, and then play the Volcanic Island and Fable the Mirror Breaker. Well, there's that thing. I'm anticipating Bowmasters here. Nope, nothing happened. Okay, so maybe I should have played Grist. Man, what do I know? Did they really keep their hand on the strength of Aether Vial of Mother of Runes? Wasteland, sure. Keeping me off that Minsk and Boo. Something's happening. Basic Swamp. That's it. Well, if there's no... Bowmasters incoming before my Fable trigger. Yeah, nothing. Fascinating. Okay. Um, I'm tempted to ditch Snap Force. With Aether Vial, it's going to be pretty hard to stop anything they're doing. However, having Force for Yorion is pretty sweet. Do I really just not activate this and just stick to my guns here? It feels weird. But I think that's probably the move. Just play Grist here. Or I could attack with Goblin Shaman first and then see what they do about that. I could also discard Snapcaster Mage since I don't have any way to use it. But also, it's a blue card for Force. And I feel like I need to catch up in some way. Yeah, I think I just don't activate this. Bizarre. Let's attack. No block. Cool. 
So do I play Minsk and Boo? Do I play Grist? I think I play Minsk and Boo. They'll both go up to four loyalty. Grist can go wider. Minsk and Boo can go taller. Yeah, I think it just has to be Minsk and Boo. And if I can protect it with Force of Will, I think we're just chilling. I assume we'll see Vile go up to four here. Yep, okay. I'm so curious as to what is in their hand right now. They haven't missed a single land drop. They put Yorion in hand. Now would be a good time for our Thought Seas of our own. Now I'm trying to think what could really blow me out through a Force of Will with Vile on four. If I go for the draw four off Minsk and Boo. And I think it's just Palace Jailer. Yeah, I think it's just Palace Jailer. Okay, I thought Seas was a great draw. And this gives us reflection at Kiki Jiki too. Can't forget about that little one. So I'm gonna Thought Seas. And taking a break from red mana. Evoked Solitude. Pitching Yorion. I think I'm supposed to force this. Everything on board is so valuable. Yeah, I'll just take that Cauldra. And now we're just chilling. Attack, attack. Mother of Ruins is going to block and give itself protection from red, I'm supposing. Yep. Let's draw four. Looking good, looking good. It's tempting to cast Grist. Okay, yeah, we just had so many options there. Well, I at no point in that game felt like I was anywhere close to winning. But I guess that's just the power of these haymakers. Let's grab Opposition Agent. I wish I had another Plague Engineer. It's so weird to not have two. Endurance has a good body. And also Extraction Specialist is pretty scary. Do I have enough stuff to take out is the question. Force Will can go down to two on that. So yeah, I guess I have a slot. I like Sometimes I like just one Pyroblast since Yorion is such a powerful engine in the deck. And they virtually always have it in their hand. I'm comfortable cutting a Thought Seize on the draw. And yeah, let's just bring in these two. I'm going to cut Flusterstorm as well. And um, I still don't know about Meltdown, though. On the draw, actually, I'll take another Force. We'll take three Forces. Kind of a lot of three drops against the Wasteland deck. Island, Ponder, Keep. I will Force a Vital, but I don't have to. Snapcaster Mage. Very cool. And beautiful spread of cards here, especially like Colgon's Command. And if they play like a Thalia next turn, I'll run out Orcish Bowmasters, but if I don't have to, I can play Basic Forest and not have to worry about getting Wastelanded. Then we'll have three mana on turn three, which sounds nice. Prisviz getting cracked. There's a swamp. Stoneforge. I probably need to force this. I won't have enough mana to cast Colgon's Command yet. And it being a 1 2. Yeah, I can't beat this card. Sorry to say. Next time I'll be prepared for it. All right, you're up. Scrubland go over there, and they're not putting Yorion in hand. Very suspicious. 
I play the Scalding Tarn out, I'll probably be looking to get either Tega, Badlands, or Volcanic Island. I think that's fine. I still don't want to expose myself to Wasteland, but I want to hold up Orcish Bowmasters. It could be a good end of turn play if they play like Thalia or something, or Bowmasters of their own. Yep, there they are. Funny little guys. In the Bowmaster Mirror, I've said this in other videos, it's very important to not play the first one. I'm fine taking two here. It's got to be Badlands. We're punished if we draw a row. We got him, folks. And another land. Cool. I like the size of Endurance, but I also like playing Leovold out there, just really punish them for targeting any of our stuff. Well, if they had more Bowmasters, it, I think they would have played it right there. This deck is not famous for drawing cards either. I'm fine just firing these in. Push some damage. Next up, I wouldn't mind finding, like, Lightning Bolt. Although, Colgon's Command should do a fine job. Swords of Plowshares targeting Leovold. Cool. I will draw a card. Drawing Pyroblast? Alright, well, well, we're ready for that Yorion whenever it shows up. This is just part of the grinding experience. Cards like Leovold that tax them two for one. We're getting there. But this could be a five drop incoming, which I'm guessing is Solitude. But they could do that at instant speed. Okay, maybe they're just playing around Opposition Agent, which I am known to play. Okay, cool. That's the card I wanted. That's the card I got. I would not mind trading this Bowmaster's for an army token, putting it in the graveyard for Colgon's command, and ready to ping something else. That's what I'm all about. Yep, Solitude. I'm happy it happened in this order. Now I'll probably shock race dead on Colgon's command. Shocking Solitude, returning Bowmasters. If they play a creature with one toughness, then that'll be cool. Might as well do it now, right? Or I could play Endurance and just eat it. Yeah, that sounds good. Good old-fashioned combat trick. Works just as well. So I have two red cards in hand, and I don't want to get wasted off red. So I think Tega is the right play here. And because of Extraction Specialist, I am going to target them. I'm pretty sure if they had a Bowmasters... Oh, they did have Bowmasters. Wow. Okay. Um, anyways, I thought for sure they would have done it last turn. Or maybe they just drew it this turn. But yeah, I get to pick that off. That's unfortunate. Bloodstained Mire. Well, our mana's looking good. I kind of want them to discard here. Endurance, it has a much better body. But I guess I just got so much more value doing this. I still have a Volcanic Island to fetch, too. So I guess I can just do this. 
whoops. There we go. And without an Aether Vial, we should be able to Pyroblast Yorion. Batter Skull, cool. Glad to see that one gone. Now we're entering a top deck war. Yorion in hand. Orc army not attacking. What can we draw? Minskin Boo? Brainstorm. Could be a Minskin Boo. What you got? Opposition Agent, cool. I like that one. And then Cling to Dusk grind super hard. And then I'll put Lightning Bolt on top if I need to draw it. I will cling to dust something. Keep on attacking just because I want Bowmasters in the graveyard. I really don't think this deck draws cards. Last I checked anyways. Although the way they're blocking makes me feel like maybe they do. But yeah, having that card in the graveyard is nice for K Command. I want to reuse that ping as much as I can. Flicker Wisp. Yep. Nasty. You got it. Well, guess what? It ain't coming back. Let's grab Lightning Bolt. Let's Bolt Flicker Wisp. Now let's shuffle. I don't want to draw that underground sea. And I guess I get Volcanic Island here. That should put us at a pretty healthy of all of our colors. Although maybe I could just use another green. Yeah, I can buy that. Now we're looking for Uro. Beautiful Strix, not bad. Uro, Minskin Boo, just some way to close this out. Underground sea, all right. I guess Opposition Agent's not a bad clock either, but I'd prefer something a little less fragile or something that draws a card on the way in. Unlike Orc Army Token, this is not something you really want to bounce. I'll just Pyro Blast that. And I don't know if there doesn't seem like they want to cast anything else, which is kind of a bummer. But I I don't care if they have two more mana. It's the you know, it's only really relevant for Calder Complete, and I'm pretty sure we can beat one of those at this point. So I guess I'll target my own ponder. Or I'll leave one turn around just in case we draw life from the loam. Pyroblast can go. And I guess Force of Will, too. Okay, there's Force of Will. And they don't have a Vial, so that's pretty cool. And maybe they're not playing around Opposition Agent, because I guess that would have been the time to fetch. Fable the Mirror Breaker. Cool. I think I can put the shields down on Force of Will. invest in this very powerful enchantment. Well, might as well do it now, right? Get one of these, or make them play an awkward uh, Swords of Plowshares on this. Yep, there's the other one. That tells me that they don't have removal for it. And if they were thinking about re casting Recruiter of the Guard, they might think twice. Stoneforge Mystic also gets stuffed by this. Council's Judgment. Okay. I will take a Scrub Land. Just an extra black source. They also have Flicker Wisp, so they can get my Shaman token out of here, unfortunately. And stop me from attacking as well. Those cards I just saw aren't revealed, so we'll have to keep that Council's Judgment in mind. They might go after Fable, they might go after Opposition Agent, we'll see. But Flicker Wisp is at least getting checked by the Strix. 
Yeah, they're voting for Fable. I'll also vote for Fable. Wasteland. Might as well keep them off Cauldra as much as I can. Now we're back in that top deck war, but I feel significantly ahead. I'm locking out some of their best top decks with Opposition Agent. And I also have Force of Will, which is cool. But my lead is tenuous enough that I want to just kind of break through. So I'm going to rip up my graveyard. I'll leave, um, I guess it's more likely to find Snapcaster Mage than Colgon's Command. So I'll leave Colgon's Command in there instead of Orcish Bowmasters. It's just a land anyways. Shieldred's Edict. Okay. Fire that right now. Play the scrub land. That way we can force of will through a wasteland. And now we got him on a four turn clock with a force of will and another cling to dust on the horizon. Swords, my opposition agent. Okay, well, I went from a four turn clock to an 11 turn clock. All the same, I don't want to cast force of will on swords. as that card is not actively killing me. Cling to dust, okay. Let's just draw right now, because I could draw a Planeswalker. Or Uro, hello. Put in the Delta. And I think play it immediately. Protect it with a Force a will and try and get this game over. Hold up red for lightning bolt if I draw it. Well, we're gonna have a lot of ponders next turn, that's sweet. But I think this should get over the line. All we need is a bolt. Mother of runes, sure. Don't want to fight over that one either, although maybe I should have. But I think it's pretty likely they'd jump block. And before I Uro, I mean before I ponder, I'm going to Uro trigger because I want to get as deep into my deck as I can. Light from the Loam, cool. A little late for that one. Yep, they are taking the block. Now let's ponder. Chris the Hunger Tide seems like a fine play. This will help eliminate any blockers. Now let's ponder again. I think putting ponder on top of our deck is Fine, for next turn, we can shuffle via Rainforest before. Cool. We picked apart Death and Taxes. Here we go in round number four. Against Yorion again? Wow, okay. I don't think I've ever faced Yorion so much in one league. But hopefully this is uh, an instructive league on how to fight the many colors. <clears throat> oh, I'm choking on Yorion. The many colors of Yorion. Unless this is just blue Yorion again. Or maybe death and taxes. We'll see. Polluted Delta though? I don't know. I don't think I'm going to be seeing Polluted Delta in death and taxes well uh let's ponder holding up fluster storm i think a couple weeks ago on the channel i faced like a doomsday orion deck i like thought seas and uro 
kind of encouraged to not shuffle here because these cards are also good. So let's not, I guess. And out of all of them, I think, in a Yorion Mirror, I'm going to want Uro the most. Ramping next turn and having a Thought Seize to play afterwards seems really good. And if they interact with Uro, it might be disadvantageous. Ooh, Underground Sea. And Scrubland. Asper Uro. And a Baleful Strix. Okay. That's going to check our Uro. This could be uh, Yorion Vile. Esper Vile with Yorion is a popular strategy. With that in mind, I don't want to get Wastelanded. Let's try and pull ahead a little bit here. Yep, no argument. Shielder's Edict, not bad. It won't be very good until we get this Strix out of the way, though. So let's put in Misty Rainforest. Grab a Bayou. And cast Thoughtseize. That is worth Force of Will to them. So now I'm really starting to wonder if this is, in fact, a Doomsday deck. Because normally a Yorion pile wouldn't mind just eating a Thought Seize here. They pitched a Brainstorm. Or maybe they just really need like a Land Cycler for land number three. It's possible. But I'm trained to assume the worst. Nope, they have Karakas. That's not good for Uro. They put Yorion in hand, okay. Let's brainstorm. I like Orcish Bowmasters a lot. And Snapcaster Mage. Can't really do it all. And I think I'll want land number six too. I'm going to float Snapcaster Mage and, well actually let's do it in this order. with an option to shuffle. And then maybe Snap Thought Seize will be the move next turn. A good old fashioned cantrip would be pretty nice here. Yeah, they're not biting though. I would not be at all surprised if this were a Bowmaster's Mirror and we're all just kinda, you know, waiting. Another Strix, though. I, I just have to bite on this. And I see a lot of people play Bowmasters before Strix gets down. That's not the right line. It is in this case, because there's already a Strix to shoot. And I'll probably just Fluster Storm to protect the Strix, and then Snap Thought Season. Hopefully they're out of stuff to do. Ah, okay. Arrows flying everywhere. So I'd say they're pretty ahead on that exchange. Gotta catch up somehow. I have this Uro that can draw me a card out of the graveyard. But I'm just gonna cast Thought Seize. This definitely looks like a uh, vile deck to me. Flusterstorm is not looking good right now. Caracas and Venser is pretty obnoxious, but I think Caracas and uh, Yorion is even worse. Just take their strongest card. They have the mana to cast it. This is going to get grindy. Unfortunate that my chance to trade this Flusterstorm was way back when that Force of Will was cast. This Edict certainly isn't getting any better. I need to start trading these cards. Uh, this needs to be a red source. And I think I'm interested in getting some more blue. I highly doubt that they'll sacrifice Bowmasters here. 
Maybe Caracas Bouncing Arrow is not even that bad, though. I can grind super hard. Force of Will, okay. That lines up a little better. And I have something I really don't mind pitching. Mm, I'll leave one land around. So I have something to target with Loam. Uh, I guess I better bolt this Orcish Bowmasters before anything else happens. Kind of a drag, but whatever. See if they vents her. I'll force a vents her. Put an end to that Caracas shenanigans. Yep. Cool. Minsk and Boo. Maybe if we can just overload their Caracas, they'll get annoyed and quit. Swing. Although Skyclave Apparition also is pretty scary. Gilded Drake. Is that going to steal my Uro? I don't know. They definitely didn't Caracas it. Yep, looks like it. There's Apparition, okay. Gonna exile Gilded Drake, sure. Yeah, they got some interaction that's lining up really well against me. That Caracas, oh boy. Plague Engineer, Lightning Bolt, Orcish Bowmasters. These are all good cards. I don't like that they're gonna do Uro stuff. Maybe I just need to put a blocker in front of it. That has Death Touch, like Plague Engineer. I could see that. It also seems pretty likely that they'll just have a way to fight through that, though. But, do what we can. I knew we'd eventually run into the Caracas matchup. Well, I guess technically the last game was a Caracas matchup, too, but... It wasn't as relevant. It could just be on right for them to just throw this Uro into the Plague Engineer anyways. Solitude, probably going after Plague Engineer. I think it is safe to say that we've lost this game. They continue to get ahead on board, and we're drawing Orcish Bowmasters. Yeah, we can pack this up. I probably did not play that very well. I kind of played into their Gilded Drake, or <laughs> I really played into their Gilded Drake and stuff. So I guess let's try and tighten up a little bit. I bet they have Recruiter of the Guard as well. Kind of just seems like an Esper, Esper Vile deck. They just didn't have a Vile that game because their deck has 80 cards in it. Uh, Flusterstorm seems poor. Cut a couple Force. And I don't know exactly how many Caracas they're on. They could be on a, quite a few, though, since they're a Yorion deck. So I will trim one Uro and a Strix to respect the uh, Orcish Bowmasters. No lands? That's a real bummer. All right. We'll make it work. Opponent keeping seven, that's not good. All right, you're up. Grist, cool. Slamming that on the play could be pretty good. Probably supposed to brainstorm right now. If I find Thoughtseize, and this also will get around a uh, Orcish Bowmasters. I like Red Blast. That kind of makes me want to wait a little bit so I can cast Grist with a Red Blast backup. They can't Gilded Drake my Grist. It might be a creature everywhere else, but on the battlefield, it is not. I don't like that they have seven cards in hand, though. Alright, go for it. Still nothing over there. Very unnerving. Life from the loam. Yeah, we could just slow down and grind them out. I like that idea. One, two, three lands. Come back to me. I'm so unmulliganed, but maybe they just have a bunch of gas in hand and don't really care. Oh, I'm not holding up Edict. 
making all kinds of four color blunder. At least we don't need to worry about land drops, but we weren't worrying about that last game either. We got incrementally grounded dust by their cool creatures. Leyline of the Void? I actually don't really care. I was already kind of transitioning away from the Uro plan. Do not dredge. Another Edict, huh? Okay. Time for a Legion of Bugs. The ultimate's not going to do much, but I think just turning out a 1-1 one, one every turn is going to be pretty solid against this Vile deck. Or a presumed Vile deck. It's got to be a Vile deck, right? They're running Venser. Oh, Wasteland. Skyclave Apparition. That is unfortunate. Now, do I bolt this or do I edict it? I think I bolt it. This will make my Snapcasters rather poor as well. No dredge. Uro right on time. I don't think I have a way to deal with this Ley Line of the Void. So Uro is just pretty much an explorer here. I wasn't expecting Ley Line of the Void, honestly. I don't think it's a card that really gets brought in much against these decks, but here we are. I am going to cast it, though. And they're unlikely to fight over it. Bowmasters. There goes my bug. I think this is annoying enough that I do want to edict it away. Another Uro. Yeah, maybe that ley line is going to destroy us. But I feel like I have a lot of win cons that aren't graveyard dependent. Recruiter. Well, that's pretty scary. Just gotta hope that they go for something blue. They're getting Samwise. Guess we're on the lookout for... Did I side out Cling to Dust? Sometimes I do against the creature decks. But no, I think I've been just kind of leaving it in nowadays. Because of Samwise and stuff like that. Pyroblast. Yeah, we're kind of... Top of our deck's not really working with us too much here, unfortunately. Let's do this. Just need some kind of action or a brainstorm. Ah, this again, huh? Okay. Yep, you're going to get a trigger. This would be the moment to shield your Zedic, though, now that they don't have a... don't have the mana to cast Sam. Recruiter goes. Okay. I don't mind Ponder, even though it will make their army a 4-4. Four four. That's pretty bad. Yeah, I guess I'll just wait one turn to see if I draw something that can deal with either of these permanents. But I'm not feeling great. Vile. Ha, ah, I knew it! But yeah, it looks like we're likely facing our first loss here in this league, and... It's not because of mana issues, like I kind of expected. But rather, we're not really finding what we need. And this Ley Line of the Void is really doing some work on us. There's Minsk and Boo. Well, if any card is splashy enough to put us back in it, it's definitely this one. Well, that one's in there. I kind of want to just hit the Bowmasters, although they can just recur it with Sam, so that's probably pretty bad. Let's make a big creature. Now what? Oh, great. Hopefully four loyalty and uh, two red blasts can tread water. They didn't flash anything in. Esper is not really known for having haste on their creatures. I'm hoping that was our first major card advantage win of the game. Having to swords a 
a boo. But if they just go like Skyclave Apparition here, I think it's pr probably safe to say that that was kind of our last Hail Mary. Or if they throw down Caracas or something. The Orion to hand, sure. Now they still have five cards in hand. This is absurd. Oh my god, not Solitude. They pitched Yorion to do that, making our Red Blast just look absolutely terrible. I'm sure by now they've deduced that we have Red Blast in hand. Well, now there's no reason not Ponder, at least. Yep, they're probably shocked this is going to work, but I just literally don't have anything to do. May get Solitude back, yep. Land. Boo. Not enough action. Another Ponder. It's okay, we'll slowly die. Another Red Blast? Maybe bringing in three was just terrible, but y'all saw their hand in game one. They had like Gilded Drake and Venser and expensive blue cards, but yeah, this is just not really good Carbon of Flowers. Let's pack it up. This is tough. Well, that was a tough one to stomach. The Trophy Dream is dead, but that's okay. Still kind of learning the, the ropes of this deck, and maybe when attacking a deck like this, uh, you gotta change your tune a little bit. All right, let's keep going. All right, we got a special treat for y'all in the last round here. We're up against the great Killaby, famous for the most insane combo decks this side of the Mississippi River. It's always a good time. Unfortunately, we lost the die roll, so I'm a little concerned. I do have Cling to Dust. And hopefully after four insanely grindy blue slash Yorion decks, we just get to pick apart an aggressive strategy and relax. They took a mulligan, but that's pretty normal for a combo deck. And I probably should have mulliganed to force a will. But I didn't. I have no excuse. Urza Saga, okay. Lion's Eye Diamond. These are all cards I'm not surprised to see out of a Killaby concoction. And Chromox. They do not imprint though. So they could be just building artifacts to have big constructs. I like Kologon's Command. That's a good one. Given the texture of our hand, I think it's going to be pretty important that I catch one of these constructs with a lightning bolt. So in the extreme disaster syndrome or scenario, that I don't hit a land off this ponder, I'm pretty sure I'd rather have a, vol a lightning bolt over a cling to dust. So let's get Volcanic Island. But we hit the trop. Oh wait, that's not a black source. Well, anyways, let's put force in hand because we are against Killaby. Probably looking to pitch Baleful Strix. And then hopefully the brainstorm that's underneath that will hook us up with a black source. Ancient Tomb, okay. I suspected as much, and no artifact, so that's awesome. We just might survive. Killaby may be a little confused to see that Tropical Island. Volcanic Island, very normal for me. Tropical Island, not so much. But don't worry, I'm still playing Lightning Bolt. Eh, if only if that was an Underground Sea. Although, we don't not need green mana, we got a grist. Alright, this construct's gonna be huge. We have Kologon's command. Gotta see if we can survive long enough. And we can discern a lot about what kind of combo they're doing by their saga fetch, and they're getting a mox opal, so I think they're just building resources here. Grim Monolith, yep, they already have so much mana, I'm not gonna try to fight over that. Phyrexian Metamorph. They're down to one card. I think I just need to force this. They're going to have... That gives them 12 power, and then we don't really have enough time to try and get out of this. Yeah, I'm going to force it. 
This is a lot more aggressive than I imagined. And I'm going to keep Strix. That would be a really good play next turn. They did not go for a Shadow Spear. I also forgot to mention, they have another Urza Saga down, so this will be quite the grind. All right, Brainstorm, let's do it. No! All right. That's a bummer. Yeah, sometimes you just miss on land. Let's see. Down to 13, then they make a construct, and then... Uh, I guess there's a world in which this works out, but... It's very unlikely. I can chump with Snapcaster Mage. Oh, wait, no. I did the math wrong. Yeah, let's just pack it up. All right. Opposition Agent, Meltdown. I feel like Endurance might have some play, but maybe not. Surgical Extraction, yeah. I think that's about it for now. I'm on the fence about Flusterstorm. Usually when you see Diamond, you see a wheel as well. Echo of Aeons. Mm, we can cut Plague Engineer. Fable, Grist, and probably Leovold too. Well, maybe not actually because they're a wheels deck, or I'm assuming they are. Maybe I'll just cut this Life from the Loam, even though it would have been pretty nice for that game, I think. I mean, I think, yeah, it would have because we were just stranded with Colgon's Command. Still not sure about this Fluster Storm. Certainly wouldn't have done any good that game. It would have been an easier pitch to force. So I'll just bring back one of my core engines back. I like a thought seize. Well, let's start things off with underground sea. Okay, it's one of these decks. Two sagas, carpet of flowers that they cannot cast, but I wouldn't count on that being true forever. This is a bit of an awkward hand. The one ring is the most powerful card here, so I'm inclined to just take that. I don't see us ending the game really quickly. More lands, not great. Don't mind Bowmasters, don't mind Force. Edict, can deal with one of these constructs. All right. Yeah, I'll keep that Force. And I'm guessing we'll want a Bowmasters. If we can catch them with an Echo, we'll likely have the biggest creature on board with our Orc army. And they ripped an Ancient Tomb off the top, which is a very good draw. It was a very good draw. Let's grab those Bowmasters and hang out. I'm not playing an island there, even though it can potentially put us further away from escaping an Uro. I'm also counteracting their Carpet of Flowers, which is a card they definitely have. And we don't definitely have Uro. Oh, let's do this now. Screw surprising them. If I can take a Construct out, I'm going to do it. And I probably just bolt this one too. Got a Tega. There. Nice board. I'm just kidding. I'm such a bitch this video. Killaby is cool though. Alright. Lion's Eye Diamond. Another Saga. Manifold Key. That's a scary one. But I, I don't think it's worth the force. Mox Opal, yes. Now, if I find a Meltdown, there is some question about whether or not to Carpet of Flowers um, fire that off just yet. Sometimes it's nice to have them invest mana into their constructs, especially when their mana is Ancient Tomb. However, if they wheel and my force doesn't hold up... Ooh, Colgon's Command. Okay, I don't care about anything anymore. If I wheel and my force doesn't hold up and I lose the meltdown, then that's a problem. But life is pretty good when you draw Colgon's command. Let's see what they do with this carpet. They're making green. 
And they're just going to make a construct right now. Sure. They have another ancient tomb. So their hand is Opal, Echo, One Unknown. So I could shatter Raven's Crime, shatter this construct and make them discard, but they probably just discard Echo of Aeons, which is not super effective. I do need to keep pushing damage. I could also shatter the Manifold Key, but they could just get another one off Saga. I think that's the problem with shattering any other target. I have no creatures in my yard. And they can discard this Echo whenever they want anyways with the Diamond. So perhaps the best mode is actually to Shock Shatter, destroy your artifact, and just put some more damage on you. Just try and win the game. Land, I'm not too stoked about. Although now we can hard cast force and then ponder the following turn. Not really concerned about giving them more mana off that carpet. Although I will get a bayou in response to this trigger. They're not making a construct. Well, why not? Are they casting something truly titanic? Voltaic key. Okay. I am so excited to see what happens here. However, if they do wheel, they might just die to my Bowmaster triggers, so that's kind of cool. Paradox Engine, I'm pretty sure I need to counter this, right? Although they have one more card that could be relevant in hand, right? If it's the ring, they time walk. They can't cast a ring right now, right? Yeah, they have three mana, but if they opal after Paradox Engine, then they will have enough mana. So I'm pretty sure I just need to counter this. Or do I just let that resolve and then counter the ring? that I surmise they have. Either way, I've told them that I have Force of Will because I've taken forever to make this decision. This is a combo piece, but it doesn't do anything on its own. Have it. So far, I'm looking like I'm right. Veil of Summer. Well, I'm gonna counter that. That card's like my worst enemy. All right, we held it off. If we draw Minsk and Boo off the top, we have lethal. Cling to dust, don't hate it. Now it's possible that I should have pondered, and if I found the spread of Bolt, Bowmasters exactly, I think I would have had lethal. Oh, that's still lethal. Didn't happen anyways. Brainstorm is cool, but I don't think these other cards really matter. I think Urza's Saga is gonna be too slow to win. Uh, I'm gonna shuffle. Ooh, I got the best card anyways. There's the bolt, but there's no bowmasters. That's okay. Let's just do that. Feels weird not having any bloom on it to hold up, but if they tap an ancient tomb, I can surprise them. All right, we did it. Taking it to game three. I think reevaluating a little bit. Surgical extraction is not really the greatest here. A lightning bolt might be worse. I'm going to cut one surgical and get... Endurance as a, a flash beater that can also mess with their echoes, possibly. All right, so our hand has Bug Mana, Colgon's Command, Cling to Dust, Endurance. There's no doubt about it. It's a really awkward hand. So I'm just going to throw it back. Yeah, that's better. Let's keep and then ship probably Lightning Bolt because that's going to try to accomplish a lot of the same things that Meltdown is, unless they're on Karn the Great Creator, which is entirely possible, but I haven't seen one yet. And I guess Bowmasters can accomplish a pretty similar feat. Whoa, 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 what's going on here? Okay. That's fine. Mox Opal. Manifold key, yep. What's the payoff? LED, okay. Force checking me. That is fine. I think I'm going to force pitch force. I'd like to ponder next turn. Untapping the monolith and just going to ship. They have a lot of mana. Ooh, I draw another blue card immediately, so I'm a little punished. 
But let's get underground sea and hopefully find a land. Okay, cool. I think we're going to try and operate on two lands for a minute. Or no, I should try to get up to three. Ah, I wish I had that other force. I think I made a big mistake. No, I think I did not. I think the odds of hitting that other ponder were pretty low. So I think I made the right play, but yeah, I wish I had force just so I could bridge the gap into that meltdown on two. I think we will still get there. We just need to dodge one draw step. But in case it all goes to hell, or sorry, we need to dodge two draw steps. I was getting ahead of myself there. Okay, there's one draw step dodged. And I probably just want to cast Bowmasters no matter what at the end of turn. There's a Ponder on top of my deck. I definitely want to melt down for two next turn. So do I want to draw the Ponder? I think so. And if I can get them to commit like another key or another Monolith to the board, then we're just chilling. The One Ring is really good. And without any artifacts to help back it up. Yeah, maybe they'll just die. But that was a really good draw. All the same, I am glad I did not counter Grim Monolith. I am glad I countered the Echo. Alright, let's hopefully ruin their entire life here. Meltdown X equals 2. More like the one permanent. We'll light him up. Five cards in hand, though. You saw what they did on turn one. Although, they already used two of their spirit guides. Chrome Mox, alright. Paradox Zone. I really hope this list gets published. Killaby is a true mad person. Okay, Colgon's command is pretty sweet. I think I just need to try and keep them off resources. And then if I shock them, they'll go to 9, which means they can't draw unless they, need, unless they win next turn. And I think this has to be a better play than risking pondering and then missing on a land drop and not having any interaction. They will draw three cards though off the one ring. Seven cards, four life, Veil of Summer, okay. They don't draw off that but they have a uh, some blanket protection against the Orcs will take key, okay, they can go again. But yeah, hopefully since they've used their land drop now, they just don't really have what they need to go off. We're just going to be shooting our army from here on out. And we'll still pretend like we have force to will, even though we probably definitely any sane person would have just forced that will take key. Okay, cool, we did it. They did not find what they needed there. And that is their our second four and one with this deck. Nothing wrong with a four and one, that's for sure. Going off that, I'm sure there are a lot of more subtle fixes to the deck. Like I think I can probably just remove Leovold and put Narset in. And then also devise some ways to be less weak to Caracas, as I mentioned in the deck tech. That was one of the main points that people had about the deck when I was soliciting some feedback on it, was that it was pretty weak to Caracas, which wasn't even on my radar because I'm not, my other deck, Grixis Control, doesn't really care about Caracas at all, or at least it didn't for a while, and then I tried Shielded for a little bit, and that was kind of annoying. I'm just rambling at this point. That was a, a pretty strenuous league, and I think we pulled it out pretty well. I am not sure if I am going to revisit this archetype for next week. I might put out a Grixis video next week, but I think in the future you can expect some more Grixis with Uro and all the cool green cards in the world because this has been a lot of fun and I'm sure there is a lot of improvement to be made on this archetype. And I'll leave it there for today.
I hope everyone has a really good one out there, and I'll see y'all next time.